Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Big Bear Math channel. And today we are going to tackle some big time review questions as we rev up for the Calc BC exam. And we're going to focus exclusively on geometric series today. I think number one of the number one skills that we want to develop through our practice is just recognizing a geometric series. Um, sometimes they get a little crazy looking and, and uh, it's hard to even get to that point where you recognize it as geometric. But once you do recognize it, um, you know, the rules are really simple. And I think as long as we follow those rules, we're going to be in good shape. So let's take a look at uh, some special ones. We've First of all, you know, what does that general form look like? Okay, what does a general form look like? In other words, how am I going to have the discipline to recognize a series as being geometric? And then under one, uh, what conditions will it converge? So right here is your general form. All right, you're going to have some random coefficient um, that we'll call A, and then you've got this common ratio being raised to the nth power. So the, the key here is to recognizing these is that you've got N, N's your index. And so you've got some you know, constant like R being raised to the nth power. And then under what conditions will it converge? Basically, as long as the absolute value of R is less than one. In other words, we want that common ratio to be as small as possible. The smaller it is, the better the chance we have of converging. However, if the absolute value of R is greater than or equal to one, then we're going to diverge. Now, just for quick reference here, this, this statement right here is equivalent to saying negative one is less than R, which is less than one. And then this statement right here is equivalent to saying that R is less than or equal to negative one or R is greater than or equal to positive one. So that may help you depending on the problem. Now, the other thing that's really, really cool and special about geometric series deals with this question right here. If you knew that a geometric series converges, the next natural question is to ask, well, what does it converge to? Most of the time, we're not able to answer that question but when it's a geometric series specifically, we can answer that question. In other words, what is its sum? So we're going to say as long as it converges, okay, as we're seeing right here, we're basically saying, okay, it converges. The sum is going to be equal to A over 1 minus R. So we're going to practice both of those today as we dip in. All right. So first of all, as we go through these three, we want to first make just make a determination. Does it converge or not? And then if it does, to what? Now, again, how am I going to recognize when I look at number one, how am I going to recognize this as a geometric? Well, I like to reorganize it and get it in what we like to call general form, A times R to the N. So basically, what do we have here? The good news is it does start with an index of zero, which is always nice. I'm going to decompose this little portion right here. So I'm thinking my denominator is really 4 to the n times 4 to the negative 1. And that 4 to the negative 1 is really like putting a 4 in the numerator. So I've got an a of 4. And then I want to take everything that's being raised to an nth power and kind of chunk it together. So I've got negative 1 fourth. You know, I've got the negative 1 from up here, the 4 from here, and that's being raised to the nth. So maybe it's in a little friendlier format right now. And so we say, hey, the absolute value of my ratio is one fourth. That's less than one. So this series certainly does converge. Now, the next next question is, what does it converge to? All right. So we'll say, OK, now what does it converge to? Well, the sum is going to be a over one minus. Now, watch this. My R isn't one fourth. My R is actually negative one fourth. So that's actually going to be five fourths on the denominator. So I'm thinking, take my four, multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, and I'm going to get 16 fifths for my sum. Not sure. I'm in now you'll notice this next question is almost identical, except the only thing it changed now is the index starts at two. So I want to kind of investigate how that affects my problem. So basically, my first couple of steps would all be the same as far as I'm just trying to rewrite this in standard form. So we get the 4, we get the negative 1 fourth raised to the n. So we're all good there. We, we still have the absolute value of r is equal to 1 fourth. So we're still converging. The only thing that index is going to affect is what it converges to. All right, what does it converge to? So now in this case, who is your A? All you're going to do is take this 2 and sub it in for this N right here. And I think that's going to tell you that the first term in this series 
is going to be, well, ironically, one fourth. Because I think four times positive one sixteenth makes a fourth. So we've got a fourth divided by one minus negative one fourth. So we've got a fourth divided by five fourths. So that's one fourth multiplied by four fifths. And that's going to make one fifth for my sum. So you see I had a dramatic impact, uh, impact on the actual sum when you were all done. I want to sneak in one more example here um, that I think is going to highlight another popular bear trap. And there's so many bear traps when it comes to these geometric series. At first glance, I've, I've seen students take a real quick peek at this problem and say, hey, my ratio is five thirds and that's bigger than one. So this series has to diverge. But the hidden bear trap is this and it reveals itself when you rewrite this problem. How could you rewrite this? So you've got 5 to the n multiplied by 5 to the first. And on the bottom, you could say, I've got 3 squared raised to the n. That's one nice way to rewrite it. So as you start to clean that up, you're going to get a coefficient of 5. And then you've got this common ratio of 5, not 5 thirds, but actually 5 ninths because of that squared sign. Our index is at 2 to infinity. So we could say, hey, my r is equal to 5 ninths. That's less than 1. The series converges. Now, what does it converge to? So the sum is going to be my a value. Again, you're going to substitute a 2 because the index starts at 2. Then that's where you want to watch out. If this index starts at 0, then this number here is guaranteed to be your a value, no questions asked. But when this index doesn't start at 0, then you've got to be disciplined and plug that 2 in. So I think my a is going to be, if I did this correctly in my head on the fly here, 125 over 9. And on the bottom, we've got 1 minus 5 ninths, which is going to make 4 ninths. So I'm going to take 125 ninths, multiply by the reciprocal, which is going to be 9 fourths, cancel those nines. So I think 125 over 4 is going to be my sum. All right, let's slide back to that problem that we kind of skipped here a second ago. So what happens if the series isn't in summation notation and it's kind of expanded out, so to speak? Do I need to rewrite it in summation notation? And the answer is usually no. It's never, I will say this, it's never a bad idea to rewrite it in summation notation, but it may cost you more time than you really want to invest in this question. So the question for me is, what am I multiplying each term by to create the next term? You know, in other words, what's my common ratio? And it looks like I'm continuously multiplying the numerators by pi, and I'm continuously multiplying each denominator by 3. So my common ratio is pi over 3. And you know what? That's just a little bit bigger than 1. And so this series diverges. Game over. Obviously, we can't calculate the sum now because, in, other, in essence, the sum would be infinity. Now we're going to take a look at some questions that I think really deepen our understanding and allow us to kind of manipulate these concepts from a slightly different angle. And they want us to first find k such that the sum of this series is equal to 20 thirds. And so I'm thinking, well, the only way that could be true is if, you know, we've got to make sure that a over 1 minus r turns out to be 20 thirds. Woo. I don't know what's up with my handwriting today. It's really struggling. So anyway, in this case, my a is 4. My ratio is going to be k over 5, and it's got to equal 20 thirds. And I could literally just tap into my algebra skills and solve for k. Now, one thing that I like to do on this side, and this is just personal preference, is I multiply every term by 5. So it becomes 20 over 5 minus k. That's how I like to simplify my complex fractions. And from there, I'm just going to cross multiply to get 60 equals um, 100 minus 20k. Uh, let's say 20k equals 40. I think k is going to equal 2 in this case. So if k was, if we let k equal 2, the sum would be 20 thirds. If you had time, not a hard question to check either. You could kind of substitute the 2 in, work out the sum, and see if it actually does equal 20 thirds. One thing I didn't highlight yet either is the index did start at zero, so that made life a little bit easier, and I could just make that assumption that A was going to be a four. Otherwise, I'd have to do a little more work to get that A value. All right, I think what I want to do is I've given you kind of another really similar one that I would encourage you to hit the pause button now in the video and try this one on your own, and then you can come back and just check your answer. All right, here's my solution. And so I've got, um, I've got my a over 1 minus my r value here. What I did is I kind of wrapped that bear up, multiplied every term by 10. 
And watch this. Why is this a plus sign right here? Well, don't forget you got to distribute. Take this minus negative sign, so to speak, and distribute it. Make sure you get a plus K right here. That's a common bear trap. Kind of simplify that denominator. We'll come up here. We cross multiplied, solve for K. So when K equals 4, the summation of that series should be 87. And again, not a bad one to check. You could substitute the 4 right back in and, and test it that way. Our last example here today is going to just put a little different twist, and that's all we want to keep practicing is what are different angles, different twists we could put on this concept. So we've been given a series here, and um, it's definitely in terms of K. You'll notice your A is, in is K itself, and your R is in terms of K. And they said it's going to converge as long as K falls between you know, this interval between A and B. But it's going to diverge right when K equals A. It's going to diverge right when K equals B. And our goal is to find A and B. In other words, it's kind of like, it's real similar to kind of finding the interval of convergence. Not, not exactly the same, but kind of in that ballpark. Well, here's what you know. How do you know whether a geometric series converges or not? Okay. What's got to happen is that absolute value of R is got to be less than 1, right? So your K plus 4. 4 divided by 10 has got to be less than 1. In other words, the absolute value of k plus 4 has got to be less than 10. And I could say, well, negative 10 has got to be less than k plus 4, which has got to be less than positive 10. In other words, negative 14 is less than k, which is less than 6. So I'm thinking to myself, a equals negative 14, b equals positive 6. That's my answer that I'm kind of leaning towards right now. And, and again, if time allows, you, it's not a terribly hard problem to check. We could take negative 14, substitute it for that K, see what happens. Um, we could do the same thing with 6, substitute the 6 for K, see what happens. Uh, you could also, just to make sure that it satisfies this condition, you could pick any number that falls between negative 14 and 6, plug them in for K and make sure that the common ratio is less than 1. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hope that helps a little bit. Good luck on your pursuit of getting that five on the exam, and we'll see you soon.